Thank you so much, guys, for keeping our weekly TV dates here on So Janelle. If you are watching on TFC, happy Sunday to you. If you are watching on ANC, happy Saturday. I hope you're having a great weekend. And if you're watching on KNET, which is a digital channel in Southern California, 25.1, happy Monday, happy start of the week to all of you. But of course, we are always on on social media. And so I invite you um, to please like like us on YouTube, youtube.com slash TV. Subscribe to our channel so you get a lot of the segments, the stories of immigration and representation that we as a team very meticulously curate for all of you. Also, we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash TV. Please uh, like our page and on Instagram, follow us for real time behind the scene photos and videos. That is instagram.com slash TV. You know, guys, when we say we or when I say we, we have a very hardworking team um, and I'm very blessed uh, about that, that works hard uh, to give you this weekly show on Sojournel, we, wherever we may be, bringing you stories of immigration and representation. And a member of that team, we are toasting uh, today because he... Um, we're very, very proud of him. He is coming off of a very successful artist reception night at LA Art Box, where he was a part of an exhibit called Belonging. Guess what? He also has his immigration journey to share with all of us because success did not happen overnight for him. And it also didn't go on a straight uh, uh, line because it was an up and down journey but he has made it we're very proud of him i want to introduce you usually working behind the scenes behind the camera here he is on camera one of our videographers and a very celebrated filipino american uh, photographer videographer video content creator creative artist here in los angeles francis gong Francis, congratulations on everything. Um, Thank you. I'm true. I'm really sincerely, genuinely proud of you because when I met you, it, mm -hmm. you were experiencing a slump, mm -hmm. right, um, yeah. in your career because um, during the pandemic. Yeah. But even before that, like, I would say that the trajectory of your career has been like kind of up and down. Yeah. Can you take us through that? It was pretty much like very challenging and slow. I started photography 2012, so I was just doing it for fun, then um, taking portraits of people and stuff. Then I met a wardrobe stylist. He offered me to do a shoot, and that gave me my first magazine publication. And I pretty much got that sign to, hey, like I can do this one, and this can be a career that I can develop and stuff. For like the longest time, I was trying to put myself out there. I was trying to get that big break for people to like just see my work and acknowledge what i do as a creative also for you to be able to prove what you can do yeah right because the thing yeah. is like i know i know what i can do yes but you just need that kind of support i need a break right. but it's difficult because i know what you're talking about it's kind of like catch 22 people won't give you a break until they've seen what you can do, but mm -hmm. you need to, the break so yeah. that to show what you can do, can do. right? Yeah. So it's, well, did you always want to be in the creative? Because you're also an immigrant. Yes. How did that affect your start in this industry? I've known, like, even way back in the Philippines, I've been into, like, creative stuff. I've been to, like, arts. So moving here, like, coming, into, coming here in America with a Filipino family, Taking a career in the creative industry is not really like, it's not like it's like they're against it, but it's not something they would expect from me. But when I saw that, hey, like I can do this one, I have like, especially like I'm here in Los Angeles, like I can take a creative career. So that was like a motivation for me. 
you moved as an immigrant mm -hmm. right after college. Yes. Because of your parents, yes. basically, yes. right? And then um, you worked like odd jobs. Yes. While doing creative on the side, yes. which is photography. Photography. Right. And then you got your big break with that magazine publication, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And then what happened after? Then I met people from the industry too, which gave me like some breaks too. Like my photos got into like British Vogue and Photo Vogue. So mm -hmm. here you were, Filipino-American creative from the Philippines, doing well here, yes. right? So things were looking up. Yeah. And then the next slump. From 2012 to like 2019, I was doing it simultaneously. Like my day job and my photography career, which I'm trying to like build. Then a few weeks before the pandemic, I got laid off. Yeah. It was weird because like my last day, I was supposed to be like sad and those kind of stuff, but I was, I was so excited. It was a different feeling. Like I was even like so surprised. Like why am I feeling this way? After I got laid off, pandemic came, so I had to like stop doing photography because I, with my photography, with the kind of work that I do, I shoot with people. But I had to like take it into a hole because like I need to like take care of my parents. So that was a sacrifice because as yeah. a creative, you know, the more you do, the more, the better you become. Mm -hmm. And the more you do, the more your name gets out there. Mm -hmm. But you've actually had to stop. Yeah, like hard stop. How difficult was that? It wasn't a difficult decision. Okay. It was, it was like, okay, I need to protect my family. I need to keep them alive, basically. Maybe f after a while, I was, it was hard for me because like, you were missing it. I were missing it. Uh -huh. And I'm missing like opportunities yes. for my career. Mm -hmm. Remember I, I told you, the first time I told you was like, because I said, it's a little sacrifice for my parents. Yeah. Yeah. I told you, um, I, I, when I met you, that, that, that was during that time. And I, I, and I was really impressed um, that you as a creative managed to and decided to just put a stop on that so that you can take care of your parents. And I told yeah. you, right? Mm. Um, that's, that's one of the things that has a promise in the Bible, which is when you take care of your parents, God will take care of you, essentially. Yeah, I, um, I remember that conversation with you. Oh, uh, all this. Right. And then what happened? Um, Was I right? <laughs> that conversation we had that you told me like, this sacrifice, it will come back. And it did. 2021 was a big break. Like, I don't know what happened. It just blessings just came in. Opportunities just came in. Like, I've been working not, nonstop. Yeah. Maranasan Muli is the mm. title of your exhibit. Tell yeah. us um, the concept behind it. Uh, Bernie, the owner of LR Art Box, she got me here uh, as one of the artists. And she told me, you're representing the immigrants. I mean, the usual is immigrant story uh, talking about making it in America. But there's always that side of an immigrant. Like, no matter how successful you are here, you, you always like miss life in the Philippines. So that was the core of my exhibit. Maranasan Muli, to experience again. In anyone's head, they wanted to like experience life in the Philippines. That's, that's why I included a tricycle, a jeepney, a, a mesh bag with vegetables, and a Sari Sari store. I, I took a quick peek at like the Sari Sari and like the, uh, the photos of the jeepney shoot. 
Um, those are really cool. The Saudi body store, the, the display he has on the other side of this wall is, uh, it just really, uh, really brings you back to the, to the motherland. It's crazy. Really also love the Saudi Sari store. Yes. Oh my gosh. That like was like, that brought back a lot of um, just nostalgic memories. I built the Sari Sari store with my dad. And I wanted to make it like very authentic. So I made sure like every um, detail is there, like the sachets, the, the radio, the chinelas, everything. I noticed the plastic balloon also. Yeah. I noticed the bunot. The That's bunot. what I remember yeah. from the Philippines. I also, I was listening to the radio earlier and I could hear you even recorded um, like real life radio drama. Yes. In the Philippines, yes. right? There was yeah. like afternoon dramas in the Philippines. And in fact, right now, while we're doing this exhibit here in Melrose, I also did an exhibit in the Philippines in Nueva Vizcaya, which is an extension of my tricycle series, photo series. I work with the tourism office and the provincial government of Nueva Vizcaya to do um, solo public art installation in one of the boulevards in our town. And that boulevard is very special to me because that's when like, my dreams were developed or like started. For my exhibit, it's, it's one thing to like see the artwork, but I wanted guests to feel life in the book. That feeling of like, oh, like I used to do that. I used to have that. I used to buy that, the plastic balloon. I used to eat that. I used to right? eat that. Yeah. I really love what he did. I, it's a trip what he did with the app and how it comes to life. That, I didn't I didn't look at that the first time I was here. So I, I really looked at it this time. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like I need to still do like a few more rounds to really take in everything that's going on. But I love what I see so far. I was really shocked about it. I love it. Um, I thought, Thought it was just gonna be like a like a boomerang or like a quick yeah, little a yeah, but it was um, but it was like full on videos and like had a lot of like detail and um, lots of great imagery. So I really I, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Francis's work is just I mean he's just so brilliant because he works so hard and it is like a, a, a it's a testament to all his hard work. It's like this collection of people and that exhibit back there. It's really cool. Yeah. I am most impressed by all the added elements that he surprised me with, especially all the AR stuff, yes. where literally his art comes to life. It's amazing, and like the day-to-day -day favorite of all the people, because yes. I'm here all the time, yes. is the Sari Sari store. Of course. Of I think it gives everybody um, a feeling of coming back home to the Philippines. Every artist wants to be big. Every artist wants to go somewhere. And please don't be that person who will encounter that person. It's like spoon time. For busy creatives like yourself, I know that um, you're always on the go, yeah. right? So the most important meal for you is? Breakfast, of course. Because um, I mean, I start the day early, <laughs> then I almost like sometimes forget to eat. Right. So I have to like have that really good breakfast in the morning. Exactly. And you're in luck. And so I brought you uh, McDonald's breakfast cool. because actually um, they have a promo going on now for their sausage McMuffin with egg. Um, you can get two for five dollars. Oh, and yeah. so it's not just you that is eating. I'm also eating with you, right? Mm -hmm. So this is yours. Thank you. Right? And this is mine. So okay. yeah, let's have breakfast together by your Sari Sari store. Sari Sari store. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. What do you think? Very good. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I normally do is um, I can only finish one. So if I buy two, I keep the other one as bought one. Oh no, I right? finished the two. Oh, you may <laughs> Oh, I here. For, for the rest of the day. You can have this. Okay, yeah, we'll do. <laughs> now you can get two sausage McMuffin with egg for just $5 at participating McDonald's. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. 
and now you're here with a very um, successful artist night, yeah. artist reception here at LA Art Box for their exhibit Belonging, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you look back on your journey, what sticks out? The I didn't give up. There were so many years that I did not get any support from people. It made me doubt myself. It was like, am I, can I really do this one? Can I really offer stuff to, to people or to the, the, this industry? So talk to the people out there. They may be creatives, they may be going through something because I think your lesson, even if you're learning it from the creative, from your creative journey, it can be applied to any journey, yeah. which is the issue of not giving up. Yeah, These are just like outside forces, basically. And if you know yourself more, if you know your core, and you know what you can deliver or what you can offer to people, just hold on to that. Because there, there's, there's gonna be like one day that people will like acknowledge that and people will like embrace you and your talent. If there's anything that you look back on that you kind of want to change, what would it be? Or w will there be something? I remember one during my first job here in um, LA. It was an office job. I remember one um, co-worker, her name is Hannah. She told me um, in Tagalog, Ang sikreto dito sa Amerika, dapat hindi ka nahihiya. And I guess, I mean, as a Filipino, like, I'm very like timid, I'm very shy. Uh, if there's something like I would like change to myself, it would be that. I'm just... Are you like, still timid and shy now that you know your worth and you've yeah. proven so much to yourself and the people around you? I'm working on it. Yeah. 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 And what else are you working on? I mean, now that you've done this, yeah. what's, what's on the horizon for you? This exhibit just pretty much like, I went all out. I laid down everything that I can do, what I can offer. So right now, I'm just pretty much like open to any opportunities. Like I do photo, I do video. This exhibit just gave me my first opportunity to do like an art installation. My exhibit that is featuring uh, augmented reality photos. So you mentioned that a lot of Filipinos here, no matter how successful they become, there's a tinge of like, Longing, longing, yeah. yeah, to be back in the Philippines or to experience things again. Yes, and I'm sure you have that. I have that, but some take it further, wanting to move back to move the back. Philippines. What about you? I'm thinking about it because um, Los Angeles is I consider it my home already. But um, I mean, Philippines is always a home for me, so I would always want to go back. Right. When you look back on your immigrant journey. Um, would you say now that you've made it? Yes. Right. Yes. And what got you here? I guess my perseverance to be successful. Yeah. What's making you brim with emotions as we do the interview now? I mean, the challenges I have. Um, I've been wanting this so bad. And it was always like one step forward, two steps back. Always. But during the past couple of years, it was just like overwhelming with like blessings. So, and especially like with this exhibit, I'm so thankful that I got this opportunity. My exhibition here in LA Art Box pretty much sums up my experience for the past couple of years. I've never felt so supported. I've never felt so appreciated for the kind of work that I do. And I'm so thankful.